Okay, so in order to make zinc acetate, we need to go through a two-step two process. Uh, the reason for this is that if you put zinc into acetic acid, it really doesn't react very well. It takes absolutely ages. So you need to go through a precursor. And the easiest way to do it is to make zinc chloride. Now, to make zinc chloride, what you need is some zinc and some hydrochloric acid. Now, you can use zinc oxide, but actually zinc is quite easy to get hold of. This is the um, internal of a spent um, 9 volt battery and there's four of these in it if you take the lid off it and what these are are a, a zinc case with a carbon rod and then a manganese and dioxide and carbon um, packed in there in potassium hydroxide with a separator around them to separate them from the case um, but that case is pure zinc so what you do is saw a line down there and you'll just be able to peel that zinc off uh, by hand it's quite thin um, I chopped up a couple of them and cleaned them and popped them into this jar. So what we have in there is some zinc case that I've peeled from some carbon batteries. Now all I have to do with that is add hydrochloric acid. Um, a good source of hydrochloric acid is a spirit of salts. This particular one is 32% hydrochloric acid and um, you pick it up at a hardware store. So it's quite easy to get hold of pretty strong hydrochloric acid. So what I'm going to do is add that hydrochloric acid to this sink. Now that hydrochloric acid fumes, so I'm doing this outside, and if you don't have a fume cupboard, outside is the best place for it. And just pour your hydrochloric acid on, and you can see that uh, reaction actually is pretty vigorous. And what that's doing is dissolving the zinc and forming you some zinc chloride in the bottom there. And it'll keep on doing that until all of that zinc is gone. So, after that's had time to dissolve, um, there we get our solution of zinc chloride. Now, I just chucked in enough acid there to make sure that the zinc dissolved, so that's actually a mixture of zinc chloride and hydrochloric acid and water, and bits of carbon from the battery and bits of manganese dioxide, and actually little bits of grass that blew in there, because I'm doing this outside. So what we need to do now is filter it. In order to filter it, we can use the good old arrangement with a filter funnel and a piece of uh, coffee filter paper and I'll just, just pour that in there and let it drip through and what you're getting there is a nice clean zinc chloride solution. So now we've filtered our zinc chloride what we need to do is get it out of there and we do that by turning it into um, zinc carbonate because zinc carbonate is uh, insoluble. Um, what we can use to do that is um, sodium carbonate or good old washing soda or soda crystals as they're known as. So just get yourself a bag of soda crystals, boil up some water and mix up a concentration, concentrated sodium carbonate solution. Take your zinc chloride solution and add your sodium carbonate to it. And what you should see is almost immediately you'll get a white precipitate coming out. So that fizzing is the sodium carbonate killing the rest of the hydrochloric acid that's in there, of which there was a considerable amount. So that's forming carbon dioxide, hydrogen. And sodium chloride to begin with. Once that reaction is done and the hydrochloric acid is neutralised, we should start getting the zinc precipitate. So once we've filtered it out, we get this um, clear solution. Now in there, you've got a mix of the uh, waste hydrochloric acid that didn't get used up in the reaction and some zinc chloride. And you can turn that zinc chloride into um, zinc carbonate by adding sodium carbonate. Now because there's waste hydrochloric acid in there, that sodium carbonate is going to react first with that and form carbon dioxide and um, sodium chloride. Once it's done with that, then it's going to um, have a displacement reaction with the zinc chloride in there and form zinc carbonate, which is insoluble, and it'll drop out as a white precipitate and some more sodium chloride. So you're going to end up with a um, salt solution with a white precipitate at the bottom, and it's the white precipitate that you actually want. 
Now in order to make the uh, sodium uh, carbonate solution, you can use this stuff, which is just washing soda. That is sodium carbonate. You add that to hot water. So boil a couple of some water and make a saturated solution of it just by chucking a load in there. And giving it a stir. Now this will fizz because of the unreacted um, hydrogen chloride in there. But as I say, once the fizzing actually stops, so if I pour a bit in there, you see it fizzing like mad as it neutralizes the acid. Once the fizzing stops, then the white precipitate will drop out. So the fizzing's dying down a bit, and you can see the carbonate beginning to form on the top there as I add sodium carbonate. Then those white flecks that you can see forming are the zinc carbonate as it comes out of the solution. So you just carry on doing that until it won't react anymore. So when you finish adding the sodium carbonate, this is what you get, this milky white um, solution here, which is the zinc carbonate in, solution, uh, in uh, suspension, and it'll begin to settle out. So what you do with it is filter it. So just use a coffee paper um, to pour that solution in there, and you'll see that white, power, white precipitate collecting on the filter paper and the clean solution coming through at the bottom there. That clean solution is actually just salt. It's uh, sodium chloride in water, so you're quite happy just to throw it away. This stuff is what you want, that's the zinc carbonate. Now, there's going to be other things in there, so it's going to have some uh, residual salt, some residual, sol residual sodium carbonate, so all you do is wash it, pour clean water over it, and all those salts will just wash out, and you'll get fairly pure zinc carbonate left there. When you've done that, just set it out somewhere in the sun to dry, and that will dry to a powder, and that's what you're actually looking for. So there is your zinc carbonate and fairly pure as it happens. So what we need to do now is turn that into zinc acetate and there's a number of ways you can do this. One you can just pour a load of vinegar on it and um, give it long enough and it will turn into zinc acetate. I happen to have some of this stuff which is glacial acetic acid and I'm going to pour that on it. Now I'm outside because glacial acetic acid is really smelly stuff. <coughs> and all you do is pour it on and let it react. See if you can actually see that. There we go. Glacial acetic acid incidentally also burns, so you need to take care with it. And it will react with the carbonate, as you can see, to fizz. And what it's forming is um, carbon dioxide and uh, a little bit of hydrogen and um, zinc acetate and the zinc acetate is obviously soluble in water. Now, because this is um, glacial acetic acid, it's going to use up quite a lot of that, and all I'm going to do is um, leave it in the sun so that any water that's formed in there, or any water that was left from the washing process, and any of the remaining acetic acid, is just going to evaporate off and leave me with salts of zinc acetate. There we go, that reaction is going nicely, and as you can see, it's all just dissolving away. And like I say, if you put an excess in there and leave it in the sun, all the acetate, uh, acetic acid is going to evaporate off, as is the water, and just leave you with salts of zinc acetate. So there it is, all pretty much dissolved away, and that's a solution of zinc acetate, acetic acid, and water. And I'm just going to leave that in the sun in this wide pan, and um, that will evaporate away. You can't heat this to evaporate it instantly, or the zinc acetate will decompose into zinc oxide, and you really don't want that. Not yet. <laughs>